Recently, I built a fairly dense custom loop in the N-Case M1. The performance was simply unreal, even with a power-hungry 10900K and RTX 2080 Ti, since it used two 240mm radiators, one of them being a solid 38mm thick. Unfortunately though, that build is a bit hard to be replicated by you guys, seeing as the CPU pump block that I used to power the entire loop is barely ever in stock, and that's the Apogee Drive 2. But to be honest, even if it was in stock, I might just be recommending this pump solution instead. This is the Iceman pump and reservoir combo made specifically for the N-Case M1 and it's easily one of my favorite pieces of water cooling hardware to date. So if you're interested in building a custom water cooling loop in the N-Case M1 or maybe just want to see something pretty cool, stay tuned and we'll see what you need to know. So I know this is specific to the N-Case M1, but seeing as it's one of the best PC cases of all time in my opinion, this piece of hardware is definitely worth taking a look at. Don't get me wrong, air-cooled and standard AIO builds in the N-Case are more than what most people will probably need for their systems, but a custom loop will really take things to the next level, especially if you're using two radiators. With that much cooling available, you can pretty much throw whatever specs you want at this sub-30 13 liter case and still get mind-blowingly quiet operation. The Iceman pump res combo is a piece of hardware that will allow you to do that in the fastest, easiest, and safest way possible. Firstly, a quick overview of what exactly we're looking at here. The top half is a nicely sized reservoir with a fill port directly above. Then we've got a drain port right at the bottom, which is nice and easy to access. And then the inlet and outlet ports, which point directly into the case. If you've ever wondered what those two little rubber grommet holes of four in the NKSM1, well, now you know. Overall, build quality is really impressive and exactly what you'd want for a high performance system. I will also note that Iceman do make two models, the standard black one that you see here with the acrylic cover for the reservoir, and also a frosted RGB version, which also looks pretty neat. Either will set you back around 90 to 100 US dollars, but that does include a DDC pump, but more on that in just a minute. Installing the pump onto the reservoir is pretty straightforward. Make sure you've got the O-ring installed when doing this to prevent any leaking, just four screws here and you're done. The whole piece mounts to the back of the NKS M1 where you'd otherwise install a 92mm fan. So the good thing is that it's not imposing on any of the hardware that you would install inside the case. One thing to definitely consider though is that it does extend beyond the back of the end case, you know, a considerable amount. I don't think for most people who are gonna be having it on their desk and kind of looking at it from this angle are really going to care. But if you're gonna be using the end case as a portable build, this is definitely something you'll want to consider. If you can get past that though, one big benefit of using this over the SwiftTech Apogee Drive 2 is that you now have total freedom over which CPU water block you go with. So if you have a high performance option or maybe a mono block that you'd like to run instead, or of course an RGB block, then that is now an option. Installation into the M1 is fairly simple. Just remove the rubber grommets, then use the included screws to secure it to the back where you would otherwise install a 92 mm fan. They do include some anti-vibration mounting. Feel free to use them, but I personally don't think they're necessary. Then after you've sorted out the rest of your build and the tubing, filling the loop up is super easy. Just pour straight into the res, try and get as much liquid into the loop as you can by maneuvering the case around. And then when you've filled as much as you can, turn on the power and the loop will start to run. The test build here was quickly thrown together just to show the installation process, but I also wanted to see how loud the DDC pump was that came with the kit. And the answer is you can definitely hear it, even at the lowest speed. The one that I ordered came with a DDC pump from Bixky, but if I end up using this reservoir in the future, which is highly likely, I might try some alternate and hopefully quieter options from EK.
So having the pump running on the outside of the case is definitely one of the primary concerns of this setup. It's going to be a lot louder compared to running it on the inside where you've got sound insulation of your panels, your radiators and your fans. That shouldn't push you away from trying this solution though because there are much quieter DDC pumps on the market than this one from Bixky. Even the one that came with the Apogee Drive 2 much, much quieter. So there's no reason that you couldn't find a really quiet pump on the market after doing some research, run it at a low pump speed because you really don't need that much flow rate and that will bring noise levels down significantly. Now, some of you might also be wondering, wait a minute, didn't you just make a video on AlphaCool's DC LT pump and say that that was the pump that you're going to be using for water-cooled ITX builds? And yes, that's right, but I'd only recommend that for single radiator builds. For dual rad builds, you might run into issues with flow rate and filling up the loop is going to be much easier with this DDC solution here. Although the DCLT is enough for smaller loops, like in my personal rig, DDC is significantly more powerful in comparison and is what I'd recommend for the end case. Another thing I'll mention is that you will have a cable running on the outside of your build as well to power the pump, but there is a small gap just above the reservoir where you might be able to fit it through like I did here. Overall, this is a really cool piece of hardware for the NKS M1. And for all of you out there who do own an NKS and haven't considered water cooling it, this might just be the easiest way to do that. Um, I might just use this solution down the road if the new NVIDIA Ampere GPUs are a bit too much for my T1 rig back there with a single radiator. This uh, paired with a dual rad solution in the M1 is probably what I'll be going with. If you are interested in picking one up, I will leave them linked down below in the description. As always, a huge thanks for watching and I'll see you all in the next one.